Hello guys, S2W here with your next casual consumer's perspective review. For today's in-depth look, we will be looking at Nike's next big upgrade to the Air Max line. And by big, it's literally their marketing motto for this new release, being bigger is better according to Nike. What have they introduced this year early in 2019? Today, we have the Nike Air Max 720 in the Northern Lights here for a review. If my video today have helped you in any way, please help a brother out and hit the subscribe button to help support the channel out. Now for those who don't know, air cushioning technology was Nike's revolutionary breakthrough since back in the 70s and 80s, with the Air Max 1's debut that introduced the visible air unit in its heel. It allowed fans to actually see the tech and not just feel it. Created by the legend Mr. Tinker Hatfield who was inspired by the exposed architecture of the center Pompidou in Paris. It was a new type of comfort that kept everyone's feet lightweight yet durable on feet. When suddenly in 2017, Nike introduced the Vapor Max, which pushed the visible air sole unit into its purest form by exposing it without any extra shielding around its surface. At that time, it had the biggest air bubble for maximum comfort. Then came 2018, where they've announced the Air Max 270, where the crown for the tallest airbag heel unit was passed onto, measured at 32mm in height. Now in 2019, what happens? You've guessed it they've pushed that height even taller for this new model. How are these new Air Max 70s in hand? Let's take a closer look at these sneakers. Looking at these shoes, I have to admit the colorway looks wonderful up close. Named as the Northern Light, it's inspired by the beauty and captivating luminosity of the Northern Lights, which is a natural light phenomenon of the Earth's sky, only seen around high latitude regions. On this sneaker, most of this synthetic mesh upper is really just a metallic purple hue but there are elements on the sneaker that transforms its colors when looked at different angles. This includes the outer rubber lining surrounding the black textile pods at the midfoot and hindfoot surface of both sides of the sneaker. As we slowly move the shoe around, we can slowly see the transformation of colors just like the Northern Lights will emit. This is further amplified by the color coating on the air sole bubble as well, which also includes sparkles within the paint to make it even more shimmering and appealing like looking at the real Northern Lights. Perspective-wise, both sides of the shoe is a mirror image of each other, offering a sleek, futuristic look with almost an unfamiliar design that just makes it unique. The shape of this sneaker instantly reminds me of the Air Max 97s, which is already a futuristic looking shape. But unlike the 97s, the material on this is mostly synthetic mesh filled with multiple holes that possibly help with ventilation in my opinion. Just like any traditional mesh, the shoe is not going to be stretchy, but it's definitely more durable and padded than knit, and also more flexible than traditional leather. There's also unique molded lines on the shoe to create depth and complexity visually, which essentially makes the shoe more detailed and intricate to look at, especially with a wave design like this. But logo-wise, the Nike swoosh is only seen at the toe box of the sneaker, with another one embedded on the air unit on the lateral surface. Looking at the shoes from the top, the lacing setup is reminiscent of the Air Max 97 as well, tagged along with flat black laces on this colorway with eye stays found on the tongue opening internally. Speaking of the tongue, it's a traditional padded mesh tongue with an Air Max logo patch cemented at the top. Nothing much too crazy going on here. Inside the sneakers, we do have foam insoles that come with the shoes, but like many other Nike sneakers, they are glued onto the footbed so if you want to take them out, you have to rip it. As for the ankle and heel wall lining, it's your regular textile lining with a padded surface. The heel is a lot more generously padded as well, which will add a lot more support and comfort to the Achilles of our feet. Then at the back of the shoes, we'll see a small pull tab raised out at the top with a small Nike swoosh ironed on. We'll also see the model of the shoe, 720, debossed on the air bubble as well at the heel. Speaking of 720, this number actually represents the air sole unit which is visibly seen 360 degrees two times, both horizontally and vertically. This brings our attention to the cushioning setup of this new model, allowing the shoe to fully encompass an inflated airbag without any obstructions in between. The whole air cushioning extends from the heel down to the toe, with attention to the heel exaggeration of air on the back of the shoes. To those who are social media cultured, they would definitely call this thick. This overblown heel bubble that extends over the edges of the footbed makes itself clear that on this model, it has now become the tallest heel airbag that Nike has ever created. Standing at 38mm tall, which is 6mm taller than last year's Air Max 270 heel bubble. Basically, Nike has fallen into the mindset that more is better, so in this case, the cushioning has become bigger, taller, and softer for usage. 
The only protection seen on this air unit is seen under the shoe, where another piece of rubber also is attached with embedded indents for durable traction. Of course, there's also a piece of soft foam right at the center of this air bubble, adding extra support and stabilization to this air unit. Furthermore, as a bonus, this air unit is also environmental friendly, as 75% was actually made from recycled manufacturing waste. Anyways, here are some Nike Air Max 720 Northern Lights fit footage. Sizing wise, I picked my true to size and it did work out for me more or less. However, since I am a wide footer, this shoe does feel a bit tad narrow on me. I wouldn't say it's too overly constricting, but they do tend to lean on that side of the narrow spectrum in my opinion. To be honest, they fit almost exactly like the Air Max 97s, so I would say go for that sizing. If not, true to size for most people, half a size up for a little bit more toe room for wide footers but from my experience, the heel slippage was strong if it's too big. Try them out in store if all else fails because more colorways are popping up soon. Comfort wise, I would have to agree that adding more air was better, as I can definitely notice the cushiony air bubble under my feet now compressing in and out. It is comfy in a way, but personally, I also felt a little too unstable for me at certain times. It's like riding on a rocky boat, so to speak. And coupled with the tall heel air unit, this is what I would assume wearing heels for ladies feels like. In my Air Max 270 review, I have already spoken about the concerns of that tall heel bag already, because depending on our walking posture, even if we didn't have heel drag, the extra heel height could potentially impact our strides now. With another increase in height, this could definitely become a problem as it did experience my heel dragging the floor. You could blame it on my walking posture, but if my other shoes are safe from heel scuff, then this model should too. If you can correct the posture while wearing these, then that problem will be eliminated, but stability wise, it could become another issue for some for its extended height at the back like wearing heels, and possibly too much of that floaty bouncy airiness feeling that the sole bubble provides. It's comfortable, but there will always be a part of me in the back of my mind telling me to be careful while wearing these. I'm pretty sure that's what's on every lady's mind while wearing heels too. Price wise, these were 235 Canadian dollars before tax, more expensive than the 270s but less than the Vapormax in Canada. It's a nice in-between option from those other models, but at the same time, keep in mind your stability preference, as the 720 does offer a lot more air, but also a lot more bounce which could cause stability questions. Maybe bigger isn't always better. As always, throw me some likes if you like this video, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and let me know in the comments if any of the colorways launching have piqued your interest. It seems like they have chosen a series of color that represent nature, from sunset to total eclipse, sea forest to pink sea. It's an interesting balance between nature and the future, which is a reoccurring theme in many sneakers released today. That's it for today, S2W signing off.